In this video, we're going to show you how to make two really common conduit bends with the EMT. All right, the first one is going to be a box offset, and the last one is going to be a 90. Okay, these are probably the two most common bends you'll ever make. We're going to show you how you can make those bends, you know, efficiently and correctly. They're pretty easy, um, but they're really important. First thing I'm going to do is bend a box offset. So all we're doing with a box offset is we're getting the end of that pipe off the wall a little bit so that it can slide down in the connector on the top of this box. If you don't put the box offset in, your pipe is going to be raised off of the wall trying to get into that connector and it's just not gonna work. Uh, it doesn't work, doesn't look good, definitely not a good practice. So box offsets are pretty simple and there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can use measurements and, and very specific uh, degree bends to get it exactly right or you can do it like I would say probably most electricians do it which doesn't mean it's right it just means it's the most common is you just kind of eyeball it so the first thing I'm going to do here is just hook my pipe so that the end of the conduit is is just barely past the end of the hook here so I don't want to be too far inside otherwise I risk bending the uh the end of the conduit so i want to stick out just past like you see here maybe a little less like right there and that's where i'm going to put my first bend and so my first bend i'm going to do about 10 degrees so it's kind of a like i said i kind of guess i'm not saying that's best but that's what i do so i'm going to put a little pressure down i'm holding the back of the bender here with my foot so it doesn't whip out on me and you don't want to grab too far back on the pipe when you bend if you do you're going to put bend in the length of the pipe. So the, the closer you can get, the better because you don't risk having as much unnecessary bend in the length of your pipe. So I go a, a couple feet away and apply just a little pressure down and just a hair more. And that's my first bend. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is slide the conduit forward. So I wanna slide it forward so that my first bend is all the way past the hook on my bender. If I do my second bend here and that first bend is in the hook, I risk taking some of that first bend out or kinking it um, or misshaping it in one way or another. So I'm gonna slide. So my first bend is past the hook and then I need to rotate 180 degrees. Okay, and so as I did that, I decided I want to slide a little bit further in. So I'm, I'm clear past my bend here, um, where I'm hooked in now. You need to rotate exactly 180 degrees. So you just kind of have to eyeball it. Make sure your bender's straight up and down. Look down the pipe. Um, look over the pipe as much as you can. Kind of eyeball it here. So I, I look like I'm perfectly straight going through this bender, 180 degrees over. If you're off, you'll see the pipe go one way or another out of the bender because you have that first bend in it already. So I'm over here and I'm gonna put, now I'm 180 degrees over. I'm gonna do the same thing, put my foot behind the bender and I'm gonna put just a little bit of bend in there and get myself that box offset okay so now if I put this on the wall it's gonna be hard for you guys to see but my pipe here I have offset away from the wall and now when I come down into the box I'm gonna be coming down directly into that connector just like so okay so that's my box offset all right bend number one box offset so I've got my box offset now, <clears throat> and now I need to come up and bend my 90 to get my pipe going horizontally across this wall. All right, <clears throat> so the first thing I wanna do is decide, okay, where do I want to bend that 90? Um, so again, uh, imagine I have a barrier here, all right? I can't go straight through. So I'm gonna come up to about uh, a little higher up here, just for demonstration, but I'm gonna come up about here, all right? I'm gonna come up to about right here. So to do that, I'm gonna take a measurement. Uh, let's do, let's do 30 inches, okay? 
So I wanna be at 30 inches to the back of my 90, okay? So what does that mean? You're gonna hear that a lot, especially when you're bending uh, 90s. 30 inches to the back of my 90. So what that means to the back is when that this pipe is running horizontally, that 30 inches will be to the back or it's gonna to be to this top side, okay? Because our pipe is gonna come up and it's gonna turn and this is gonna become the back, if you imagine it like that, I guess. So it'll be 30 inches to the back, to this top side right here, not the center, not the bottom, but to the back, okay? That's really important to understand, um, especially if you're trying to get up close to, you have a, uh, you know, the ceiling joint and you wanna be right in that. You know, you would measure up right to that joint and that would get the back of your conduit tucked right up along the ceiling or any other obstruction that you might be running against. So that's what to the back means. It's gonna to be to this top side, in this case, of the conduit, not the center and not the bottom. It's gonna be the back up here. Okay, so I wanna be 30 inches to the back. All right, <clears throat> so I've got my offset bent. Now I have to visualize here, okay, which way do I need to bend this 90? My offset has to stick out just like this. Okay, I need my 90 to bend this way. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is just make a mark. Okay, well, how do I make a mark? If I make a mark at 30 and bend at 30, it's gonna be wrong. Okay, when you're bending 90s, you have a deduct that you have to account for. And that deduct makes up the difference that's gonna happen here in the radius of your bend as you come across. Um, this radius needs to be accounted for and it's really easy to account for using deducts on this conduit. So my measurement is 30, and this is three quarter inch EMT. I'm gonna deduct six inches. And that's actually um, bender specific. Every hand bender I've used is standard, you know, six inches for three quarter inch EMT. But if you get it into bigger machine benders, the radius might actually be longer. Um, but for every hand bender I have used, it's six inches for three quarter inch conduit. <clears throat> so I'm gonna come down here and uh, let's see is the best way to do this so you guys can watch me here. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna measure 30 inches, but I need to deduct six. So I'm not even gonna make a mark at 30 because it doesn't matter. I just wanna deduct six. So I'm gonna make a mark at 24. And yes, I'm using a Sharpie sue me. I know you, I know using Sharpies isn't always the best idea because you want to, um, well, shoot. I can't even see my mark. Oh, there it is. I know that using Sharpies isn't always the best idea because you don't want to leave marks on the conduit, especially if it's going to be visible forever. Um, in most cases, you know, use a pencil or use something else that you can wipe off pretty easily if it's going to be visible forever, right? Um, if it's going in the wall, you know, personally, I would say I don't really care, but this is just a demonstration. And here's my mark at 24. I just want you guys to be able to see that. Um, okay. All right. Now, crucial, crucial, crucial. And maybe one of the hardest parts about bending, at least for my small brain is visualizing which way I need to bend this conduit so that it actually comes out right. Because if I have this turned, if I have my offset turned, because I bent it first, if I have it hooked in the bender the wrong way when I bend it, my offset's gonna be wrong and it's gonna be turning back into the wall if I want my conduit going that way. And I, I wanna point out too, um, I didn't have to bend my box offset first. It depends on the situation. Sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. Um, you don't have to do it first. Now, if I was gonna have a really tight 90, like really tight, then it might be easier to bend my offset first so I'm not trying to get it in the bender with a 90 that's really close and you're not gonna have a lot of leverage to get it down. This one is pretty close and so I think it would make more sense to put the box offset in first like I did, but I could probably get a box offset in it afterward, after I bent my 90 if I wanted to. But anyway, Okay, so my 90, based on where my offset is, needs to turn this way. So I'm gonna hook my bender in. 
like so. And <clears throat> I've kept that, that visualization, all right? So I'm gonna bend my conduit back toward me. My offset is in the right place here. So I, I know I'm right. Now what you need to do is you need to make, line your markup with the arrow on the bender. See if you guys can see the arrow. It's gonna be a little bit hard, but there's an arrow right here. And that's where you want your mark to line up with. So I'm gonna slide this forward, get it to line up just like that. Okay, I totally forgot. I can't believe I forgot this. Is the direction you hook the bender, okay? So I measured, remember, I measured up to 30 and then I came back and deducted six, all right? Okay, so from this point to here was 24. When I hook my bender in to bend that 90, I point the hook of the bender to the direction I measured from, okay? So I measured from the end of the pipe here where my box offset is, 24 inches this way. So I need to hook the hook facing the way I pulled my measurement from, okay? That's extremely important. I can't believe I forgot that when I did it. So I'm gonna look down, does my offset still look like it's about 90 degrees off of this plane? And it does. Okay, my mark looks good. I'm gonna hold pressure on everything. I could start my bend in the air, but for this I'm not going to. I'm gonna hold pressure so nothing moves. I'm pulling here, okay? The reason that's important is if you go to rotate this over but you don't hold pressure on anything, everything moves around. I just twisted the conduit, it slides in further, and, and it just isn't gonna work. So, get lined up again. Lined up, now I'm gonna hold pressure so everything stays together. Hold pressure the whole time. And now I'm gonna bend my 90. So to do that, you need to put your foot on the cleat of the bender and applying pressure with your foot and the top of the bender here, you pull and push with your foot. Pull and push, pull and push, okay? Now when I get close, in this position I get too crowded. I can't go anywhere, all right? <clears throat> so what I do as a right-handed person is I will step behind the conduit and I'll actually put my left hand on top here, my left foot on the cleat of the bender. Then I'm gonna take my right hand and just kind of guide the pipe back with my right hand. I'm still applying most of the pressure, almost all of the pressure with my left side, but I'm just using the right almost to balance myself in a way. And I'm gonna keep that 90 coming. Okay, you kind of can switch around as you need to. And I'm gonna kind of look, okay. It's a little embarrassing because I'm filming, but I lost my level a couple days ago. And so I don't have my level. Nor normally I have a little torpedo level. I would magnetize right here and get myself obviously level. level. So I'm gonna eyeball it, I'm sorry. Normally I always have a level, just so you know. But kind of eyeball it. And that looks pretty good, at least, uh, maybe a little more, at least for my crooked eyeballs. Okay, so there, get her unhooked there. Now there's my first 90, all right? So I've got my box offset oriented right, okay? So it's just perfect right here in this knockout. Give myself 90 here. And uh, we're pretty much good to go, all right? That is bend number two is your 90, okay? So <clears throat> important things to remember is when you're, when you're using this bender and you're bending on the floor, you need to make sure that you're using pressure on your foot. If you just bend it with your hand, see if I can demonstrate this a little bit. If you just try and bend with your hand and you stand back here maybe, you're gonna put a lot of pressure and you're actually gonna make bend back here where you don't want it. 
And so it's really important that you use that pressure on your foot to keep the pipe down as you pull the bend up, okay? That's one of the most common things I see with apprentices or uh, inexperienced pipe benders bending pipe is they won't keep enough foot pressure down. They'll just try and pull up. And when you do that, you flex all the way back to where my foot is at and you put bend where you don't want bend. So use that cleat to put pressure down and step on it as you pull up <clears throat> with the handle. So you have to be a joint effort here with your foot and your hands. Um, second thing that, that I see is really common is just getting your orientation right. I've been bending pipe for a lot of years, um, you know, 10 years at least, and it's still pretty hard for me sometimes to visualize, okay, which way do I need to hook into the bender um, to make sure my box offset stays in the right place. So just take your time to visualize how you have to hook into the bender. So we've, we've demonstrated now how to make your box offset and your 90, all right? Now in the future here, we'll show you how to maybe jump over an obstruction using a three-point saddle and uh, do some other bends like offsets and kicks and things like that. But this is a good place to get started because these are gonna be possibly your two most common bends, um, depending on the work that you're trying to do is box offset and a 90. So if you like this video, please subscribe. We're gonna have more content like this coming out. Uh, we really appreciate you guys and, and we plan on making a lot more videos. So thanks and have a good one.